Good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another session with Brian and Janice. We welcome you this evening and hope to shed some additional light onto you today. Um, today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about social trends that affect the African-American community uh, as far as the, our economics, um, health disparities, and just social issues that we are dealing with today. Um, I'm going to let Brian open up for you and because like I said before, I'm learning a lot as well as you guys are. So I don't read as much as he does, but I want to and I try to, but you know, a lot of us, we get it and we get it best when we hear it presented by others that are expert in their fields. So we just keep it real. Yeah, just keep, always keep it real. Well, um, I think that that's an interesting topic whenever we deal with social issues um, in the African community and the adverse effect that uh, social trends have on the African, African, African American community uh, tends to be uh, more, I guess you would say, would, would, would it affect us in a more adverse way than other communities. Uh, so when we talk about that, we have to deal with the fact of um, nihilism, uh, which is simply um, the, uh, the depravity of, of a community when they tend to give up hope and they don't understand the value of their humanity and therefore their existence is marginalized and dehumanized. So whenever we're dealing with uh, social trends, I think we have to understand by way of media, when, I talk, when we talk about media, we're talking about uh, TV, stereo, any media outlet, outlets, uh, even from a social standpoint, Facebook, YouTube, <clears throat> all of these outlets pay a, play a part in the social engineering of a group of people. African-American community is the one that uh, tends to gravitate toward these media platforms more so than other uh, communities. So of course, we're going to be adversely affected uh, in that process more than other communities. So when we look at that, sweetie, we, we have to uh, begin to understand and identify the patterns as it relates to how this is uh, adversely affecting our children, adversely effect, affecting our community, whether it be uh, marriages, whether it be uh, on a religious uh, level. Uh, so we have to look at all of those trends and identify them and then understand how to reverse the adverse effect of what they cause in our community. So we could talk about some of those things. We could talk about some of the adverse effects. Mm -hmm. uh, we could talk about uh, as well as the adverse effect. There are some pros to it. Uh, there are some good things that come out of uh, out of some of these media outlets that exposes some bad things. So we could talk about it from that, um, you know, uh, from that arena as well. Uh, so I'll let you okay. uh, try back <laughs> in on that. Okay. So one of the things, Brian, I've you know I've heard a lot. I've heard questions asked about is uh, when it comes to social issues in the African American community. Um, where, how can, you know, even if there is a projected uh, reparation to come to us, how is it that, why is it that it is like pushed on the back burner? Like they're not even considering that really. There, there's buzz about it, a little talk here and there, but it's like we're not being taken seriously. You know, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. the government doesn't feel like they really owe us anything, regardless of what happened to our ancestors. They don't mm -hmm. feel like they owe us anything. Mm -hmm. So when I look at that, I'm trying to say, you know, if you know that you owe someone that and that they were done wrong, when is it that you will try to make that right? And why is it that they can't, they won't make it right? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I, and I think it leads right back to what we're talking about. Um, let me just say kudos to uh, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee uh, in 2019 of June. She did bring the proposal of H.R. 40, which is House Representative Bill 40, 
uh, which deals with the study of reparations and should African American descendants of slaves mm -hmm. be paid rep rep uh, reparations. Okay. Uh, so we know that that bill was initially um, initiated on the floor by John Conyers. So when we look at the actual origin of the bill, what it is, is slated to do as it relates to the study of the bill, mm -hmm. uh, to see if the African-American descendants of slaves were adversely affected by a system that marginalized them in every facet of American society, we see that because of the system marginalizing us and dehumanizing us, that it has affected us socially. No one can deny that. So when we look at reparations on a, on a larger scale, we have to deal with the fact uh, that the system has played a very you know, intricate part into poverty as it relates to yes. the African-American families, mm -hmm. into social behavior as it relates to um, how we treat one another, mm -hmm. economics as it rela relates to what we actually, our worth and value is as it relates to the society and how that is tabulated. We have to look at the educational piece and how we've been uh, given second tier, second rate, uh, you know, information okay. to try to educate ourselves and our children, even those of us that have gone to higher uh, institutions, institutions of, high of learning. learning. Mm -hmm. uh, we were not taught our history in those institutions of learning. higher learning. Exactly. So we were still um, indoctrinated and assimilated into a Western system of thinking and education as it relates to our profession, as it relates to our study. So we have to consider all of those things. I think where, uh, because the system has so marginalized us and made us and dehumanized us and made us the last Tier. group yes. on the totem pole, yes. so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, they are less likely to even hear about the social problems that were caused in our community by the system itself, which the system is a system that is run predominantly and has always been run predominantly by white males. Yes. Okay. So they are not they they don't take our problems as serious uh, because of that. So pushing reparations forward is very difficult to get through because the Europeans that run the system doesn't feel that they owe us anything. Even though we are the victims, they feel as victimizers that we should have a solid reason. We don't need a reason. The system gives us all the all reason, the you understand? Yes, yes. But, but they feel that we need a reason to validate why reparations should be paid. Well, you paid repar reparations to Japanese families yes. after the bombing of Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. Okay, you paid reparations to Jewish families, which America had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we paid reparations uh, to Asians of Chinese origins. Mm -hmm. So all of these things, every country have paid reparations in some manner. The Germans paid reparations to the Jews. You know what I'm so we have, uh, even when you look at Russia, they paid reparations to in, in their unite, uh, in their fight to unite, okay. they paid reparations to uh, certain factions that were in their community that they wronged. So reparations is simply about repairing yes. the wrong that was done yeah. to a particular group of people. And the American descendants of slaves deserve to be repaired. We are behind not because we're lazy, no. not because we are not a people group that doesn't work hard or, or that's not intellectual and intelligent mm -hmm. and that is savvy as any other group. Exactly. We are behind because the system structurally put us at the bottom. It was designed that way. 
So we are not behind because of our own fault. That's the number one thing that they have to deal with. We are behind because the system clearly defined that blacks had no rights in these United States as a citizen to be entitled to all the other royalties that the citizens, white citizens, let me specify that, were entitled to. So that's why we are behind. So when we deal with social economic problems, when we deal with our community and the way we are, you cannot uh, look at our people and say we don't love each other right. right, and that we hate each other and then uh, throw black on black crime right. Oh. in there as mm -hmm. a caveat mm -hmm. to say, look at these people, they're savage, they're brutes, all of these things, um, you know, without taking into account what the system actually did. Okay. So those are the things that we are, you know, that we are, we're looking at. Those are some of the things that we uh, want to do and, and some of the things that uh, we're, we're talking about here. So Facebook family, Janice is, is gone entertaining some of the neighbors that just came over. But anyway, we'll keep, uh, keep in line with this discussion. Also, I uh, just want to talk about in the process of that, um, whenever we deal with the terminology of self-hate, self-love, self-respect, self-dignity, all of those things, whenever we deal with that, we deal with that from a basis and an understanding that as a community, we have always loved each other. We have to understand that in the process of being able to recognize self-hate, self, you know, all of these self things. And like I say, you know, the, the media love to throw that out there. Uh, self-love, self-respect. We have always been a people that respected each other, that loved each other. What we have to do is look at what caused us to react to each other in the ways that we act now as relates to social engineering and as it relates to some of the things that, uh, that are promoted through media outlets that are not advantageous for us and that, have, that affect us adversely. And when we look at those things, we see all of those things are systematic. We see all of those things are put into our community for a reason. Um, so whenever media outlets promote our women as Bs and Ws, there's a problem. Whenever they promote our men as just merely thugs and gangsters mm -hmm. and, and that they have no integrity and that they have no respect for our black queens and and our black young ladies and our black daughters and sons, yes. whenever a media outlet promotes that, they're doing that in reference to what the system is designed uh, for us to fall in the category of the, of the systematic design and categories that the system designed to place us in. And that is to place us in a, in a in a status and a category that says that we are no better than the normal animal on the street mm -hmm. and that we can't function any better. But we were a people of self-respect, self-love, self-dignity, self-pride. All of those things were in our culture, were in our yes. community. Yes. The dehumanizing of that is controlled by media outlets, and controlled by CEOs, controlled by market corporations that do not look like us. Though they may produce the shows, the producer behind the shows are not our community. Okay, so we have to be conscious of that. We have to be aware of that. When we fight, we have to fight as a collective in reference to understanding that we are valuable people. We are our own best resource, right? Yes. So if we are our own best resource, then we have to raise our standard. We have to raise our value. So when I think about an economy, you know, an economy functions off of supply and demand. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to raise the demand as it relates to who we are. And we have to supply a good product that we can say this product as a group of people that we should be in high demand because we are a people of excellence. So we have to get back to some of those things when, it talk, when we talk about self-love, self-respect, self-dignity, all of those things, because they're not uh, so far gone that we cannot recapture yeah, yeah. those things yeah. and that we cannot repair our communities and, and deal with the social ills of our community better than what the government would deal with them uh, as it relates to our group of people and our neighborhoods and, and our black ghettos. Yes. We are the best advocate that we have to deal with each other. We are. Not the government. Sending the government into Chicago, you know, like Donald Trump wants to do yes. to deal with so-called black-on-black crime, it will never work. We are the best people group to police our own people. Exactly. <laughs> so the, uh, those are some of the things, and, and yeah. you're back. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you chime yeah. in there. So, so one of the things that, you know, that I, I, I'm concerned with is that we, uh, we have been, I guess what you could say, social, socially engineered mm -hmm. by the media, by television programs, by social media to... For the, for us to see, even our for our youth to grow up seeing us against each other, mm -hmm. you know, women against women, men against men, vice versa, you know, and and I have nothing against the reality shows, nothing at all. I just wish there was some way that we could promote more positivity in those shows and not always bringing each other down, mm -hmm. you know. And I know all of that is uh, scripted. And like you said, it's a not, lot of it it, you know, a lot of that is scripted and it's not done by us. It's done by the producers on the back end, which are mm -hmm. not of us. Mm -hmm. They're not African. So if we could promote each other and learn to get along better with each other. and But, but like Brian was saying, we have been programmed so long. This has been in the works for years mm -hmm. to pull us against each other. That way, if we're so busy fighting against each other, we don't see what's really going on behind the scenes. Yeah, there's a good book out that deals with this, Brother Tim Burrell, called Brainwashed. And he talks about the effects of media on the African-American neighborhoods and communities. So the, the point that you make with us as a people group having to pull ourselves up from a dynamic of morality mm -hmm. and principles. We've got to get back to that. See, I do not believe that even if we get reparations, reparations will not solve social issues in our community. No, it won't. Okay? It'll help economically, but if that is the only thing that, you know, reparations is going to do, so we have to deal with reparations from us. Systematically, if we were left out all together and that and if we were discriminated against in every portion of the system then we have to demand that reparations deal with every part of the system so that means that if mental health issues were caused by uh, the system and being deprived in the system then reparations should deal with mental health issues in our in our communities it should deal with a lack of education in our community. Yeah. It should deal with a lack of jobs in our community. So we're not just talking about them writing a blank check. check right. You, you understand? Yes. So we have to deal with all of those social dynamics that affect us as a community. So when we deal with uh, certain shows mm -hmm. uh, that demean our black women, when we see black men and women on shows fighting, Yes. When we see black men and women on shows uh, sleeping with each other's husbands and wives, when we see black men and women on shows uh, that curse more than a sailor, drink more than a fish, mm -hmm. that is part of that social engineering to continue to promote yes. the deprivation 
and, and to continue to promote the dehumanization of who we are as a people. It is a way that Europeans and other groups of people can look and say, look at how they're, they're acting. Right. They don't deserve anything. reparations yeah. because they can't function just from a social standpoint. They don't know how to treat each other. Yeah. But what I have to do is remind our brothers and sisters that that is a TV program. That's exactly right. And anything that has the word program in it, mm. the word program means to systematically train. Mm -hmm. So it is programming of your mind, programming of your actions, programming of, of how you uh, handle yourself. So it is a social program. So whenever you look at a TV program, we have to think about that. We have to think about this TV program was meant to socially get us to buy into what we're looking at. So optics with black people is the best way to teach. Right. Okay, yes. for, for my educators out there. Yes. <laughs> okay. I learn better by seeing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why I need a book that I can touch, feel, and read. As opposed to some people don't need the book. They can just hear audibly and they can learn. But black people have always learned optically. Yes. When they look at something, it goes into those two portals, those two eyes, the windows of the soul, yes. and it gets into where? Our whole, our whole being. It gets yes. into our soul. So now we feel that this is how we act. Well, look at her, girl. Look at him. And look at how he, you know, he demeans his, his wife or his companion, and yet they back together the next week. No, we did not operate like that yes. as a community. And I think we have to understand that as a African people, our ancestors did not grow up, uh, did not come up dehumanizing one another. That's exactly That's right. right. They, there was a respect and dignity in our community that was first class. Yes. We honored each other. So we operated in the spirit of our ancestors that where we held each other in high esteem. Yes, we did. And we looked at each other as a commodity, as an asset. We, we did not look at each other as something less than in our community. <laughs> you know, so we've got to get back to the place to where we see that every part of the community is valuable. From, like I said, from the least to the greatest, greatest. Yes. there's a role for everyone Every, to everyone. play. Yes. And we have to value the least just as much as we value the greatest. Yes. You know, so yes. when you take Booger T. Washington uh, theory and analysis and his thesis about us being able to work together as a community to build ourselves up. And then when you take W.E. Du Bois. The, the, that's right, mm -hmm. the Du Bois. When you take his philosophy, his theory, his analysis, his thesis, and he says that, yes, as we build, we have intellectual property yes. that can add to Booker T. Washington the value of being able to industrialize and agrilize ourselves and build our own community. You have the intellectual property that can come in and meld it together. Yes. And now we have a nation. So the whole concept of those two men and the processes that it would take to work together is what we have to get back to. So neither one of them picked one group over the other. No, they didn't. Okay. Right. So Du Bois dealt with the intellectual, Booger T dealt with the yeah. poorest of the poor, and said, no, you can make your own shoes, you can make your own yes. brick for your home, yes. you can make your own, you can get out there and grow your own foods. That's how you build a community and a people. We have lost that. So instead of us aggregating and, and coming together to do things positive, we're aggregating now to promote what is socially being engineered into us.
and that is the, the furthering of the demise of what a black community should look like and should act like and should be like. Yeah. So that's where we have to turn that around. You know, and Brian is also, um, I know we did, it, it encompasses this, but we didn't discuss the health disparities mm -hmm. of the African American community. And we see that on a grand level with this COVID-19, um, where you have certain uh, uh, areas in states that are not getting tested, mm -hmm. that are not, they don't have proper testing, they don't have the access to get the correct proper medicines. Mm -hmm. um, so they are being left behind, even when it comes to what we're dealing with now in this pandemic, people are being uh, left out based on uh, socioeconomic status. And mm -hmm. that is part of the health disparity. So we, we have to look at it in all facets. We talk about social issues, which involve our mental health issues. And that is falling apart on, a, on an array of levels. Our health you know, mm -hmm. our mental Absolutely. health issues, we are really struggling with that, especially in the prisons. Mm -hmm. It's a big, you know, a big push to get more mental health uh, therapists and psychologists out there to help our people. So we're hurting in that area as well. So we got to look back and see where, where do we start, mm -hmm. you know. We, and you, you bring up good issues. You're the expert on the health from a, from a standpoint of the health component, yes, we have to deal with, there is a, you know, I don't believe that in any community, a community cannot survive, at least the African community cannot survive without a spiritual component that works. Now notice I did not say a religious component. Right. I said a spiritual yes. component that yes. works. And that spiritual component falls back to the premise of understanding that our lives as African people were the foundation of all other, and is the foundation of all other life. If we cease to exist, then all life ceases to exist. Exactly. Now that is universally spirit. So you are a product and you are the father and the mother of all other creation. <laughs> so when we get back to understanding that component mm -hmm. and understanding how important that is, understanding that your love is what produced other love, that without black love, without black dignity, Without black civilizations first, there will be no other civilizations. Right. There will be no other love. <laughs> there will be no other dignity. Yes. So everything started with us. Mm. Now, why don't they teach us that? Because they want you to understand, want you to think that you had no significant role and that you are not important as it relates to this circle of life continuing and existing on this planet. So what they try to do is marginalize your greatness. Mm -hmm. They try to marginalize your, and I don't, I, I, I would hate to use the word superiority, but they, they try to marginalize the actual creative foundational part of you. Okay, and when I say that, I say that as being the genius of all sciences, the geniuses of all mathematics. We've heard this over and over. Yes, we have. So now this is this is very powerful. When you look at the comedic African symbol of life, it is the ankh. Yes. Okay. And the ankh simply is symbolic of in representation of life coming forth. Okay? Exactly. Now if you take the K and the H off of unk and put a GST with that word unks means dread, despair, anxiety, and depression. Mm. It is from the same root word that unk is from, the on, the A-N. You understand what I'm yes. saying? So what has happened in our community, we have gone from being a life-producing community 
And whenever life is produced, love is there. Yes. Respect is there. Dignity is there. All of those things are there, you see, to being an angst community, one that is depressed, one that is deprived, one that is suffering from major anxiety. Mental so health so issues. Mental health. Yes. So we've gone from being a life-producing community to, Ill to being a dependent community. Community. Yes. And, and whenever there's dependencies, it could dependencies turn into addictions, addictions turn into death, so suicides and so on yes. and so forth. So whatever we you know we lost as it relates to the spiritual component, and we can talk about the politics, but our community, black people above and beyond all things. We are the spiritual fabric that holds this planet together. together. We are. We Our are. children need to understand it. We need to understand it. And like I said, we're not talking about religious. We're not talking about going to church, jumping up and down, shouting and doing all. No, no, no. Because there's a lot of people that do that and, and they have no sense of who they are. When you are a spiritual person, first you identify with who you are. And then secondly, after you identify with who you are, you respect the culture that you came from. After you respect the culture that you came from, then you honor the ways of your ancestors. After you honor the ways of your ancestors, then you follow the ways of your ancestors. And after you follow the ways of your ancestors, then you produce the greatness of your ancestors. So we have somehow left that behind we have forgotten because, and there could be many, many things that causes us to forget. We have spiritual amnesia mm -hmm. about who we are. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to get back to the basics and get back to the foundation of what made us who we are. We have to identify ourselves with that greatness, with those people with our foremothers and our forefathers, we have to identify ourselves with their struggle and the greatness of their struggle. We have to go beyond their struggle. We have to look at the greatness of how they built civilizations. We have to look at the greatness of what they did to deal with social disorders that rose up. And, and see, there are many solutions in our culture. We don't have to depend on social psychotherapy no. from a standpoint of what the European wants to give us, which is medicate us to death. And that's <laughs> literally, you're the health expert, so you, you know that better than I do, yes. but want to medicate us to death to where we become walking zombies mm -hmm. and cannot process, cannot think, cannot become conscious and aware of who we are and what we need to do as a community to rebuild ourselves. See, government's not gonna rebuild our community. No, we're gonna have to do that. And we have to do that. Mm -hmm. Even if reparations, and we need to push for this, and we'll continue our discussion on this, and we'll even go deeper than what we've gone, mm -hmm. but if we're going to be successful, we have to rebuild ourselves inwardly as well so that that outward manifestation of what we want to see our people become and, and then start demanding our rights as it relates to a people of dignity, principle, honor, and, and knowing that we are no less than anybody else and knowing that we are not children of a lesser God and that we deserve to be on the same playing field and we deserve to be treated as any other human being on this planet. So that's what I want to say today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is it time to six thirty? <laughs> no. It's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, it's going so fast. But I am gonna do a watch party after this. Um, so feel free to you can always go on my Facebook page. Uh, Janice Martin and you'll see it. I have several but this one has the REN in it. Uh, I'm a nurse so you'll see that one and that is the one that I will be sharing this um, watch party on. Okay, I'm gonna let Brian take us 
Yeah. yeah. And I just I just want to share this with you, Facebook. But if you all have any questions that you want us to address, uh, anything that you want us to do some research on that you want to know about, um, email us. Uh, we have an email address. It is Mawad JB at gmail.com. Let me spell that is M as Mary, A as Alpha, W as William, O as Oscar, D as Delta, J as Janice, B as Brian, at gmail.com. Is that right? That's is it. it number one? Mawad. Mawad JB1, is it? Yeah, <laughs> I, we're trying to get it, but but I will um, definitely put you that. You can post it on I Facebook. I can post it on Facebook. Yeah. I'll, email, I'll, I'll email, and we'll be more than happy to ask yeah, you. Yeah, so any yeah. questions you all have, uh, and we're going to be venturing out this month with a YouTube, YouTube channel mm -hmm. uh, that we're starting, and also we're going to be recruiting uh, anybody that wants to build our community. So Mawad stands for Men and Women of Destiny. Uh, we need lawyers, we need teachers, we need doctors, we need just regular people to be a part of what we're trying to build. Uh, I believe that it's, it's time for us to make a difference. You, I, me, mm -hmm. he, she, her, him. It's time for everybody to come together and to make a difference. So we will be doing some organizational things yes. uh, and, and we will be inviting people yes. that wants to be a part of this. Uh, but we need the intellectual, uh, intelligent black people that want to work with us. We need people that just have common sense and common dignity. We're not ruling out anybody. We're not partial to one or the other. We just want somebody that wants to Helps make a difference, difference in the community. Yes. And as we launch this, as we brainstorm, uh, we're going to do it with everybody. It's not going to be just one particular person right. because we all can lead. Uh, so we'll address all communities uh, that need to be addressed and we'll speak out as it relates to uh, promoting the agenda of moving black people forward so that we stop falling behind. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank you, But Brian. we'll get you the correct email address. Yes, we will. God, <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this evening. And like I said, I'll be sharing a watch party immediately after this. Uh, I hope everybody has a, have a wonderful week. Uh, be blessed. Uh, we love you. And uh, until next Sunday, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.